So before we start talking about the reactions of aromatic compounds, we need to learn how to name them. So nomenclature. So let's break it down. Um, unfortunately, nomenclatures have a lot of common names, so we'll have to learn some of those. But we'll go. We'll follow our our normal IUPAC rules and figure out how to name these compounds. So first of all, benzene. So normally we would just use benzene as a parent chain, right? So under normal situations, we're, I'm going to show you some other exceptions, but for now, benzene is just a parent chain. So if we have a chloro compound on a benzene, this is just chlorobenzene. Simple enough, right? If we have a nitro group, so I will put um, an NO2, that is called nitrobenzene. And I have them all in the upper right, but it could be anywhere on the ring. Those are just simply called benzenes. Okay, so that's simple enough. Number two, the common names. This is where it gets a little bit trickier. So if there are a few, actually there are quite a lot of common names, but there are six or so that are commonly used that we'll talk about that you'll you'll see a lot in the next two chapters so we'll make sure we kind of understand those so first of all if we have a methyl group directly attached attached to the benzene on any carbon any top bottom left right or whatever that is known as toluene it's given that name so it's never called methyl benzene that is just automatically called toluene that's the parent chain if we put a hydroxyl group and OH, now this is an alcohol, this is called phenol. It's just automatically given that name because it has the OH group on there. If we have um, a methoxy group, so now we have an ether. This is given the name anisol. All right, that's automatically given that name. All right, if we have a carboxyl group, I'm going to put that to the side here to fit it in there. So there's a carboxyl group. You may have seen this one before. This is benzoic acid. So that is an N, benzoic acid. If we have the aldehyde version of that, so one less oxygen, that is benzaldehyde. Uh, and so regardless of where these are, these are the names of them. And then finally, if we have an alkyl group, or, or, or an alkenyl group, or a vinyl group, and I guess I left off the hydrogen right there, a vinyl group, which kind of is a, an interesting compound. It continues the resonance there, but this is called styrene. S-T-Y-R-E-N-E, -E, styrene. So these are simply common names that you just have to know. So if you ever see the OH, it's not hydroxybenzene. It's, it's always called phenol. So what happens if the aromatic part of the compound is not in the parent chain? So we're going to call this as substituents. So as a substituent, a benzene ring is called a phenyl group. Phenyl, YL. Remember, YL is a substituent. That's a phenyl group, not a phenol. Phenol is the one that has the OH. You can also use PH as a symbol or a phi, a letter phi to, to represent a benzene ring as a substituent. And you might be a little confused, but we'll, it's usually obvious when the, the benzene is not the parent chain. There's much more going on, and you can see that that's just a substituent. There's also a special case if you have a benzene ring and an extra carbon. So this is called a benzyl group. You would think the benzene is a benzyl, but an extra carbon is a benzyl group. So that would look like um, something like this. I can draw this correctly, um, or you could even use a BN as the symbol to represent a benzyl group. So let's look at a few examples. Okay, so what if we had some sort of alkyne chain like this, and then there was a benzene ring attached to it? You can see how naming the group would be a little bit more complicated if we named this as a benzene. So we're going to name this as an alkyne. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So this is oct ein. And if we look at the, the triple bond gets the lower number. So this is two octine. And then the group hanging off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven off of the seven is a phenyl. All right, it's not benzenol or something like that. It's a phenyl group. All right, now remember if it has an extra carbon, we call that a benzyl. So here I drew two benzyls, and remember this is an ether, so this would be dibenzyl ether. Another example is suppose we had more than one benzene. That's another way where you might ha not have the benzene as the parent chain. So this is interesting because very rarely do we see methane as a parent chain because usually you have to pick the, the largest chain and very rarely is one the largest chain. But in this case, this is a methane and there are three benzene rings. So this is triphenyl. We don't need a number because methane only has one. So there's no other alternate number that you can have. So here you can see you might have to use phenyl or benzyl when it's not part of the parent chain. So how do we number it if there are more than one substituent? How, how do we number them? So if we have um, two substituents, on the benzene ring. So we're talking about two substituents on the benzene ring. We, rather than numbering it one, two, one, three, or one, four, we use letters O standing for ortho, uh, M standing for meta, and P standing for para. So if we have the groups, so ortho would be one, two, meta would be one, three, and para would be one, four. So for example, if I had this compound right here, um, this one would have um, two chlorines. They're one, four. They're directly 180 degrees across. So this one is para dichlorobenzene. The parent is benzene because it's not, this is not one of those special cases, those sp six special cases that I showed you. Here's another example using our special cases. So if we had an OH here and a CL. So we remember that OH gives us one of our common names that is phenol. And so then we have a chlorine. Now you can, and the chlorine would be chloro. It is legally technically correct. You could say three chloro, but we generally use these uh, abbreviations or these letters to show these are one apart. This is one three, so this would be metachlorophenol. The letters help us visualize it. Meta, I can see them one apart easier than seeing the numbers and that kind of thing. So the meta, the the letters sort of help us visualize that. Finally, we'll talk about naming if we have more than two substituents. So if we have more than two substituents. The rule is that we will use the lower numbering system, use the lower numbers. So if we had something like this, and we had chlorine and a chlorine and a bromine, let's do something like that. Now notice these two are ortho, these two are meta, these two are para. We can't use ortho, meta, para. That only works if you have two. It's a simple shortcut, but you can only have two substituents. In this case, we have three. So let's start naming and then we'll figure out the numbers. So we know the parent chain is benzene. We know we have two groups. We have dichloro and a bromo. And remember alphabetically, bromo comes first. So we will have bromo, whoops, dichloro, to squeeze that in there, but we have bromo dichloro. And how do we number it? The rule is you want the lowest possible numbers. You can start anywhere you want around the ring. If I start at the top and go, go to the right, I would have one, two, four. If I start here at the middle one, I have one, two, five. If I start at the bottom, I have one, three, four. So the lowest numbering system is counting this way, starting there. So that gives, so let's see, one, two, three, four. That gives the bromo a four, and then the chloro is a one and a two. Four bromo, one, two, dichlorobenzene. All right, here's another example. You may have heard of this compound before. 
um, if we have the benzene and I put nitro groups on it. So now this has four substituents. Um, once again, this is a special case. The one that has the methyl, remember, is toluene. So this is toluene, and when and if it gets to be the parent chain, it doesn't matter how the numbering system works, that, that substituent that gives it a common name automatically gets number one. So that is number one. So the remaining groups are nitro groups, and we have three of them. Tri-nitro, tri-nitro-toluene, that's all one word, and then we would number it two, four, six. So you want the lowest possible numbering system, keeping in mind if it gets a a common name, then that substituent gets the lower number that gets number one. So you may hear, I've heard of 246 trinitrotoluene. That's actually TNT.